In this video, we're going to learn how to derive column values from other columns using ClickHouse's default value modifiers. So let's launch ClickHouse, and then we're going to describe a streaming.json file that I've got on my machine. So you can see it comes back. We've got the metrics property, and it, that's a nested structure. So it's got buffering details, and then it's got quality metrics, and then it's got viewing details. If we scroll a little bit up, we can see some other fields. We've got season ID, we've got episode ID, and we've got user ID. Let's have a quick look what one of the rows in that file looks like. So you can see we've got the user ID is a UID, we've got a numeric episode ID and season ID, and then we've got buffering details, and inside there there's buffering duration, we've got buffering quality metrics with the audio bitrate, and then down at the bottom we've got the viewing details, and it's got the average watch time and the views. We're going to create a table called metrics1, we'll order by episode ID, and then we're going to ingest the data from that streaming JSON file. And you can see it takes just under a second, and we've got a million rows ingested. Now we're going to look at some different ways that we can add columns that derive their values from that metrics column. So let's first show how we created that table, and then we're going to just copy that create table statement and paste it back in. And now we're going to adjust it. So we're going to create a new table called metrics2, and we're going to start with the default modifier. So with this one, the default value is stored in the database. So we're going to add a new column called average watch time. It's an int64, and it's going to use that default modifier, and its default value is going to be coming from metrics.viewingdetails.average watch time. And if we then run that, that creates the table, and then we can insert some data into that metrics2 table. So we'll do the user ID, the episode ID, the season ID, and the metrics, and then we'll select star from metrics1. So that was the initial table. And you can see it's now ingested the data. And then we can write a query to compute the average watch time from the average watch time column, and then from going into the metrics viewing details average watch time. And they should give the same result, and indeed they do. Now, when you're using the default modifier, you can also choose to pass in a value for that field when you're doing the insert. So let's truncate metrics2, and then we're going to tweak our insert query to add in the average watch time column on the end. And then we're going to pull out the metrics, viewing details, average watch time, and let's just multiply it by 2 to see what happens. And if we then rerun the select query, you can see it comes back, the one that's computed from the metrics column has got a 30.488, and then the one that we've stored is double that value, which is what we'd expect. Next, let's learn about the materialized modifier. So again, with this one, the value is stored in the database. So let's go and get the create table statement for metrics2. We'll update it to be metrics3, and then we're going to come down and change that default to materialized. Let's run that, and the table's now created. Now, when we use the materialized modifier, we can't choose to pass in a value from an insert query, and that's how it differs from the default modifier. So if we run that insert into metrics2 query, and we'll just change it to metrics3, you can see it comes back with an exception, saying we can't insert column average watch time because it's a materialized column. So let's get rid of the average watch time, and we'll just insert it without that, without that column. And you can see it now inserts the data correctly. And if we do the select, Again, you can see it now comes back and we've got them, them both being the same value. Another thing to keep in mind with materialized is that those co that column won't show up when you write a select star query. And the reason is so that the result of a select star can always be inserted back into the table using insert. So if we write a query here, so we're going to select all the fields, we'll do again the two JSON string on metrics, and we're going to select it from metrics three and we'll get just one row back. And you can see it comes back, we're missing average watch time. But what we can do is we can add in a setting called asterisk underscore include underscore materialized underscore columns, set that to 1, and you can see now average watch time is showing up. And finally, let's look at the alias modifier. So with this one, the value isn't stored in the database. Instead, it's computed at query time. So if, let's get our create table metrics 3, we'll change it to metrics 4, and then we'll change the modifier from materialized to alias. And then we're going to insert the data into that table. You can see it inserts it. And like materialized, alias columns won't appear in select star queries. 
And so what we need to do this time is use the asterisk underscore include underscore alias underscore columns setting to get them to show up. And you can see now they, they come back. And finally, let's write a query against the system part system dot parts underscore columns table. We'll get back the table, the column, the compressed byte size, the uncompressed byte size for all of our metrics tables and just for the average watch time column. And if we run that query, you can see it comes back and we've only got entries for metrics two and metrics three. Metrics four is missing because remember it was using the alias modifier and that's not actually stored in the database. So we're gonna do some more videos on insert patterns. Keep an eye on the channel for that. But in the meantime, check out this video up here where we show how to transform log data with materialized views.